The harvest from spring plantings have been going strong, but I'm starting to see things are beginning to change. Temperatures are rising and my garden is beginning to make the transition from spring garden to summer garden. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly what that means. How I transition plants out of the garden and make room for the more heat loving plants that will be growing throughout the summer. As you transition from a spring garden to a summer garden in a hot climate, there's some questions. When do I pull the plants? How do I know when to plant other things? What do I need to do to the soil? I'm gonna show you what I do in my own garden to prepare for summer so we can continue to enjoy great harvests all summer long. How do you tell when it's time to pull a squash plant? Because of the extreme heat of the low desert Arizona summers, the pollen isn't going to be viable all summer. So you can look for a few things to determine if the particular squash plant is done. If you're starting to notice a lot of pests, like squash bugs, diseases like powdery mildew, or female blossoms are being pollinated, but then they still wither and die, likely it's too hot for that pollen to be viable. Just keep an eye on plants. You'll see the production begin to slow and then stop. Leaving a plant that is battling pests and diseases in your garden can introduce those pests and diseases to other plants in your garden. This cucumber has not performed like I hoped it would. We've dealt with powdery mildew and then most of the cucumbers have not pollinated. It's just not doing that well. So I am going to pull this out. So to remove it, I just cut at the base. And then I'm going to make sure I remove all the clips and then unwind the vines. I took out all the beans, I cut them off at the roots, and now I'm just top dressing with some compost before I plant anything else here. Well, I'm not top dressing. Got my assistant, Tyler, here. Top dressing with compost, thanks, Tyler. So basically, just adding some compost to the top and then spreading it around. So this bed was full of onions. We harvested the onions and I have basil plants growing in here now. I'm gonna have lots of different kinds of basil. It does really well. Some of it I let flower and the pollinators love it. One crop that will happily make it through the summer are these red noodle beans, these asparagus beans. They love the heat. They're gonna make their way to this trellis and climb. This bed had the leeks in it. So I've planted some purple hyacinth vine, which is a beautiful heat loving vine really pretty. So that's at the base of this ladder. So we will let that hyacinth vine climb this ladder. The honey melons that I planted when I took out the cucumber popped up. So I'm gonna let these guys get a few more leaves on them and then I will thin them out. You can see the okra has sprouted. Same thing over here. Pulled a few squash plants and okra is sprouting. This bed was full of squash. I planted some basil in here and some globe amaranth. As plants come out, there's room for existing plants to grow and thrive, and that's exactly what happened with our peppers. We added support and trellises for the peppers this week. These are vertex cages from gardeners. Last really well. I really like them. The insides are nice and big. Now that a lot of the squash in this bed is gone, these peppers that have been planted here the whole time, it's kind of their turn to shine. Gave them some support, and now that they're getting more sun, they're really taking off. These pepper plants are officially completely out of control. I should have put cages on them earlier. They kind of got away from me before I noticed it. Luckily, this type of cage I can put on after the fact, so I'm hoping I can get it around and not break too many branches in. The peppers seem much happier now that we've added these cages. Peppers really do need support. Those branches are really brittle. So the peppers are doing really well, growing, We've had lots of harvest already. I wanted this lisianthus to have more than one stem. It was getting one just really long stem. 
So I went ahead and um, clipped it here. And now you can see there are two different branches or stems that are forming. So this will be a fuller plant instead of just one tall kind of spindly plant. Lufa vine has just done what lufa vines do and just grow, grow, grow. Have an Armenian cucumber on this side. Same thing over here, Armenian cucumber on this side. And then the mini spaghetti squashes are still finishing up here. Eggplants, super happy, sharing a bed with the peanuts and the turmeric and ginger. Sweet potato bed is officially full. So these guys will just grow, grow, grow all through the summer and we'll harvest them in late November or October. And here's the West Indian cucumelons also climbing and I believe that is a cantaloupe that I interplanted right there. So I wasn't sure if these guys had last through the summer, so there's a cantaloupe also making its way up through here. Cantaloupe has taken over the ladder mesh block, got a few fruit, made its way over to the ladder. And the Cape Gooseberry also very happy, very large. The garlic we harvested a few weeks ago is all dry and in years past I've made garlic braids. This year I kept it pretty simple. Once it was dry I cut off all the tops and then stored it in these great bags just like I store my onions. On the menu tonight is the classic minestrone soup from the Magnolia Table Cookbook. Fresh basil, garlic, carrots, zucchini, onions, tomatoes, and I'm substituting Swiss chard for the spinach. Can't wait. There's no such thing as too many fresh tomatoes. Homemade salsa is one of our very favorite things to make. I make it every year. We love sharing it with family and friends. That's what we've been up to in the garden this week. Thank you so much for watching.